Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video review of my new Mauser chain stitch machine. This is it. I've had it for uh, seven days today and I just wanted to talk a little bit about it. Um, it's a very nice machine. This is a standard chain stitch machine. It does chain stitch and moss stitch and um, I've also been using these um, thread cones provided by Abdul Bari at Mauser. Um, they're uh, really nice uh, floss like uh, thread that's a little fatter than Madeira number 12 and um, it's very beautiful thread. So I wanted to kind of talk about my experiences with this machine so far. It arrived in a very nice uh, box, well padded, and I have been over oiling it and working it and breaking it in for um, the first few days and um, sewing with it. You can see I have my, um, well this is my arm to hold the phone and I have some lights um, set up on my desk. I'm currently using it with a um, three quarter horsepower Conso uh, servo motor and I have it hooked up um, using a six millimeter uh, green PU uh, rough belting. Um, it's on a, a table that I made from two stair treads. So I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize in advance for the long video, but I wanted to just talk about this machine. Um, so far, it's amazing. I love it. I happen to own also two Singer 114W103s and one Cornelli A model. So I have... Um, been using the Singer mostly, so I can tell you that this this beautiful um, Mauser machine is almost identical to the Singer. It functions in the exact same way, and um, these are replica machines from India, and they are very, very reasonably priced. And the machines are beautiful, and you're buying from direct from the factory. So let me um, pause a minute and get over and show you what I've been working on. Okay, so this is the first project that I've done on the Mauser machine. It's um, two swallows that I've put on the back of this jean jacket. And um, today I'm going to be doing a demo on this flower on the front. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the birds. So um, this was completely done on the Mauser machine. You can see it's, it's very nice. Um, produces a stitch exactly the same as the singer you cannot tell any difference and um let me zoom in a little here this um has all been done with the exception of the flower petals and the white dots everything on here is the thread cone from uh mauser and um it's very nice thread i just didn't happen to have these lighter colors in um abdul's thread so this petals and the white dots are done in Madeira uh, number 12 classic rayon so you can kind of get an idea the Mauser thread fills much better than the um, Madeira it's a non uh, stranded non not twisted floss type thread so anyway so these um, two birds on this jean jacket have been made completely on the Mauser machine and then today I want to do a little demo on this uh, flower I'm putting on the pocket. So I have two layers of tearaway backing, and I have gone and done the um, the outline in the black uh, Mauser thread. I um, went ahead and did uh, three lines of basting across this, um, across the backing, because this is like a stretch denim jacket and my jackets have been uh, stretching when I've been applying stuff to the pockets. So I'm going to see if this helps. So let me um, pause you real quick and we'll get over to the machine and, and get stitching. Okay, so welcome back. So I've got the jacket uh, ready to go here and I have um, a yellow cone set up ready to go, um, threaded up. To my machine and I'm gonna um, get you guys going. Let me just say um, this video I'm going to be posting it into a YouTube channel called Chain Stitch Embroidery so that we can share with everyone and 
If you have not already, please check out the Facebook group, Chain Stitch Embroidery Machine Singer 114W103 Cornelli and more. That's a Facebook group, Singer Chain, uh, sorry, Facebook group is Chain Stitch Embroidery Machine Singer 114W103 Cornelli and more. There's lots of people in that group that are willing to help um, answer questions. And, you know, my whole goal here is to share my experiences um, with everyone so that more people can take up um, chain stitching. So I'm set up now and I'm ready to go on my very nice Mauser machine. I'm holding the yellow thread from the bottom for the start. I'm just going to start stitching. Start in a circle. I lock down my um, thread and then I'm going to go around the outside twice. I have my stitch length set pretty short. It's um, somewhere around 11 or 12 stitches per inch. And I'm gonna just going to start filling. So I've gone around the outside twice and I start doing circles to fill. I'm just trying to get all of the denim um, covered up. I'm still a rookie. I haven't been doing this for very long. Um, less than a year. Okay. So, looks like I've gotten the yellow done. I'm going to stop. I'm going to lift my um, needle up. I'm going to reach under with my right hand and I'm going to pull some slack out from between that spring and the looper. Lift my foot. I'm going to start to try to pull my um, project out. Oh, I broke my thread. Did not want to do that. Um, that means now uh, I'm going to have to see if I can get my thread up from the bottom. Okay. So I'm still able to sew. Did not mean to break my thread. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to back off that loop. I'm going to pull out the thread. And I'm going to pull out enough thread that I can get it into a needle. So you see the loops popping out. Then I'm going to get into this last loop. And then I'm going to... Um, Pull this last loop so I can bring the thread to the top. And now I have enough thread that I can tie off with. Um, this spot here is a little light, so I'm going to um, just feed this thread down to the bottom and go over it a little more. So I'm just going to poke this thread in. Sorry if you can't see that. So I'm going to poke the thread in. I'm going to grab it from the other side. I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to go back and um, just put a little more yellow in there because it looks a little thin on this side. So I start again, I'm holding the, um, the thread from underneath where I last stopped, putting a little tension in it. I'm just going to um, do a little more on that thin spot. Okay, so now I'll try this again. Raise my needle, lift my foot, pull out some slack from below. Pull my work towards me. Try not to break your um, thread. If you can't pull your project, it helps to lower your needle just a touch. That brings the notch of the needle out of the nipple and lowers it so that you can slide your, um, your thread out a little better. This Mauser thread is a little delicate, so you want to be careful not to break it. So now I'm going to grab the strand on the right, which I know comes from the bottom. And I'm going to pull it up 
And as I'm pulling, I'm going to release a little more slack from underneath as well and pull up the, uh, the slack. So this side comes from the bottom and sorry, this, this side comes from the bottom and the other side is still going through the needle. So I just need to have enough thread to be able to tie off or feed it to the back side. So I'm going to cut this here I'm holding on to the one that comes from below and I'm going to pull out a little bit of slack so that um, sorry so that I can uh, not lose it for my next color sorry I had to get the thread untangled from below and then this part is the one I'm going to use to tie off so the thread can get pulled out of the needle raise my needle back up and pull my fabric out so this is the thread from below. You don't want to let go of that because the spring will pull it back down unless, if you don't have enough of a tail. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to switch color and I will be right back. Okay, so welcome back. So I've switched colors and um, I'm taking off the yellow and I'm going to a, a darker or light gray Madeira Classic number 12. So when you switch colors, it's much easier to just tie a knot and pull the next thread through so you don't have to get under there and um, do a lot of re-threading. So I always do that. It, it helps. Um, and here you can kind of see the difference between the Madeira number 12 Classic Rayon and the Mauser um, very nice floss thread, which is amazing. Um, so I'm going to feed my project back under my foot and these flowers are supposed to be matching, um, these flowers on the bird or swallow. So I'm going to be doing the flower petals in two different colors. So I'm going to start in close and, um, start with my outline. I'm going to outline my flower petal two times. I try not to go over my outline. I try to stay, you know, where I'm supposed to go, but it's not that important that you're accurate because you're going to come back with the black outline and that will define everything. you see a loop pop up, try to um, get it flattened down. If you have any loose loops that aren't caught, you will see that after your first laundry. So if I'm making a project for a gift, I always put it through the washer and dryer and uh, make sure. So I've done my first um, part of the petal. Get this out of the way here so y'all can see. I'm uh, going to tape that down with some blue tape. Blue tape works great for um, helping keep stuff out of the way. So now I finished the um, the first petal, the first half, and basically I just jump right over my black line and I start on my next petal. Because as I mentioned, you're coming back later and gonna um, outline everything in the last color, black. It helps to do dark colors before light colors. So I'm circling the petal now twice and then I'm going to fill in with some circles. And um, I'm kind of doing my fill working in the direction of my next petal. It takes a little bit of uh, planning ahead. It helps sometimes. Um, these are things that kind of come with a little bit of practice and time. So now I'm just going to jump over to my next petal. I'm going to go around the outline two times. I don't want these to be exactly even. I want it to look, you know, random and kind of organic or natural. I have a three-quarter horsepower servo motor on my machine, and I've switched the stock pulley to a 45 millimeter pulley, which makes your machine go a lot slower and it, it makes it much easier to control, especially if you're a beginner like me. 
and you're trying to learn, there's no reason to fight your machine. It just makes everybody unhappy. So um, I currently am running it at 1,000 speed, but with the uh, smaller pulley, it makes it much slower. And I, I could be going a little faster, but I'm having trouble thinking and talking and sewing at the same time for this video. So twice around the outside, doesn't have to be perfect. So I just want to kind of encourage everybody that if you want to do this kind of embroidery, it's doable, it's fun. The, um, the price point of the original machines and some of the replicas do make it cost prohibitive for some people. I understand that. Um, that's why I wanted to, you know, get one of these Mauser machines and thoroughly test it out and give a review on it because it's an awesome option. The um, end product, you cannot tell what kind of machine it was made on. And since these cost basically one half the price of replicas or even one third the cost of an original machine, which is difficult to find and sometimes can be of questionable origins, um, I think this is a great option. And I'm really interested in getting everybody sewing. That's my goal. And so I wanted to give a good review of this machine. So you can see we've just done the first flower petal and um, it's going nicely again. And um, just wanted to give a shout out to Abdul um, for the Mauser machine, which he um, sells. And I'm so thankful that I bought this from him and it's you know just up and running beautifully i can't complain it's it's awesome it's sewing exactly like my singers um can't tell any difference except for the fact that it's it's newer and it's running fabulous so if you want to cut off you can i'm just going to continue on and switch colors and then do the next part of the flower petal but if you're if you've seen enough go ahead and um exit now or stay tuned for the rest of the flower petal i'm going to put you on pause while i switch the threads and please do check out the facebook group if, if you're on the youtube channel and you're watching this video please check out the facebook group chain stitch embroidery machine singer 114 w103 cornelli and more it's a free range group where everyone is welcome all machines all makes all models and there's lots of people that are willing to try to help everyone get up and running these machines are a little finicky and you really are going to have to learn how they operate to be able to do it well you cannot be depending on a service technician to take your machine for help if you're going to be doing this kind of embroidery you're going to be very frustrated if you don't try to learn how to operate the machine yourself and how to all the little variables like thread tension and um, needle timing and things it's very simple um, very very simple and i'm happy to teach anyone that has questions about it and there's other people in the facebook group also that are very willing to share their knowledge i'm still a rookie but i will help anyone if i can now let me get off my soapbox, change my threads, put you on pause, and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. I've got my thread color changed now to like a light blue. I've got it ready to start, and I'm going to go. So I've noticed that... Um... Oh, I broke my thread. Hang on, let me re-thread. Okay, so I had noticed that... Um... The flower is kind of uh, cupping up a little bit and puckering. So I had tightened my thread tension, but apparently that was a little too tight. So on my first stitches, I broke my thread. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the, the jacket arms falling off the table here. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I thread this machine really quick. So I've got the, um, the needle handle facing towards me at the six o'clock and the needle in the highest position. So I put my um, threading wire down. I'm, I can feel it um, below. So I'm gonna put my thread on the hook in the threading wire and pull it up. And um, 
this Mauser machine is very easy to get going because the hole that you stick the threading wire down is a little larger so you can see really good. So I turn the needle now to the nine o'clock position. So the handle is at the nine o'clock position and you turn it over and you can see the, um, the thread get into the looper and it gets caught by the needle. Okay, so now the needle has just pulled up the thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish out the thread from there. And um, it can be a little, I'll zoom in here, it can be a little confusing at first. So I'm gonna raise my foot up and I'm gonna pull out the loose end. And now I have, um, you can see the thread coming up through the small hole through the needle. So I need to pull that out and off the needle. And it's not the easiest thing to do at first. I'm pulling it to the three o'clock position and my needle is facing to the nine o'clock position. So I know I'm not gonna just pull it off the hook and I'm gonna reach under, sorry, pull it off the hook of the needle. I'm gonna reach under and I'm gonna let some thread out, loosen some slack in between the spring and the looper. That makes it easier to pull up to the top. And then you wanna um, try to figure out, you know, which, which one is, is the tail end and which one is not the tail end. And then you want to pull it off your um, your needle hook, and you just pull it, either break it or pull it through. Sometimes I just break it because I don't want to figure out which one is which. Okay, so now I have the machines threaded, and um, it's coming out the small hole. I'm gonna pull some slack out so that I can find it once I feed my jacket under. Let me zoom out a little bit here for you. So I've got some slack out that direction. If you don't pull slack out, that little spring will just pull your thread back under. Had that happen. Okay, so I put my fabric under, lower my foot. I'm going to grab that thread tail that's under the fabric, sticking out on the right, and hold on to that. Now I'm going to start sewing. Okay, so it didn't break my thread this time. I start and make a little circle that locks down the beginning of my um, thread. Now I'm going to go around. I'm not liking how that looks. It's a little tight. Um, I'm gonna try to loosen my thread tension a little bit. Um, I have found it's better to be loose than tight because the rayon does shrink a little and once it goes through the laundry, things will kind of even out. You can um, iron it with a warm iron if you want, but I would just rather it be looser and tighter. I do put all my stuff through the washer and dryer. So now I'm going around twice and um, I'm going to start my circle fills. The, um, the Mauser machine is, is you know really smooth. It's brand new so there's not a lot of um, free play or slop in it. Um, it's snug but everything is, is smooth and free moving. Um, very happy with it. Cannot, I mean, cannot beat the price. And you're getting, you know, an awesome machine. Abdul in India, his family has been manufacturing sewing machines for 50 years. He's got all the spare parts. A lot of his spare parts will also fit a singer, um, which is good. And uh, this machine. The uh, base of it dropped right into the cutout of my table for my singer. So if anybody wants to order a machine head but doesn't have, uh, doesn't want to pay the postage for the table or you want to make your own, um, it's the exact same hole as the singer. So I'm back to just filling my uh, outer part of the petal here. It's a little bigger than the little gray part, so I'm going in bigger circles. I'm not so coordinated, so talking and uh, filling are kind of difficult. You can go any direction. If you want a, you know, a really, really neat looking thing, you can have all your stitches pointing one direction, like fur. Um, I have found that when you shorten the stitch, it looks more like Berber carpet. So it kind of doesn't really have as much of a direction. This petal looks like I got like a whole lump in the middle, so I'm just going to kind of nail that down a little bit. 
Okay, going to the next petal. Just gonna hop over the black. Try to stay in the lines. Outline it twice. Definitely I'm going on top of this gray because if you don't connect your stitches with the, whatever the color next door or even within itself, the fabric will bend and you'll see the fabric sticking out through where you didn't catch the neighboring uh, colors. Go back over here. Okay. Next petal. Hopefully, you all can see that. So, I'm going to do the rest of the petals this way, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to outline. Um, everything in black and I'll be done so I just thank you all for watching I hope maybe I've inspired some of you to you know maybe give your hand a try at this there's a learning curve at the beginning you just have to figure out you know all the ins and outs of the machine all the adjustments and then after that you're limited by your imagination everybody's style is a little different and um, even though the machine is doing the same thing, everyone's pieces are slightly different. And it's wonderful because you can just create whatever you want with this machine. And um, it's, uh, it's amazing. So I'm going to kind of stop the video here because I realize it's been a long time. But I just wanted to, you know, give you all a good review of the Mauser machine and um, let you know that it works exactly like a singer and like a Cornelli A as well. This can do moss and chain stitch. It comes with the um, the spring loaded uh, worm gear that can be flip flopped from moss to chain instantly without having to retime your machine. And um, Abdul in India knows his machines. He has huge, huge selection of um, thread colors and his thread cones are also the best prices around. You can't beat it. I know I sound like a commercial for him. I'm not. I'm just a hobby person, but I just really want to share when you find a good product at a good price that does a great, you know, end product um, that does amazing stitching. It's, um, it's just really um, amazing and uh, something that um, I just think is great. And I want to see more people up and sewing, hopefully. So um, thanks again for watching. And if you haven't, please go and join the um, Facebook group, Chain Stitch Embroidery Machine Singer 114W103, Cornelli and more. And if you're already in the Facebook group, thanks for watching. And maybe check out the YouTube channel, Chain Stitch Embroidery. Okay, thanks everyone. Take care.